Welcome in this short presentation, where we will cover some principles of MaxiTerm technology and the different model design we can offer upon your application. We like to start with this picture. It's a full skid package for building heat. In this case, we're heating glyco. And uh, everything is pre-assembled, pre-wired, and pre-test before shipping. It, it's a redundant system. There's two heat exchangers side by side, vertical flooding heat exchanger, which I will cover uh, the principle of it in a few slides. So control panel over here, variable speed drive, electric wire. And we like to call this package the ultimate five package because there's only five connection for the contractor. So one steam inlet for boat, one condensate outlet liquid, liquid in and out, and power ready to start. This is a domestic hot water system. This is a 30 million BTU um, process that we shipped uh, in the summer of 2018. 30 million BTU represent 900 horsepower. So for those of you uh, that understand borders, uh, please uh, put a picture in your mind to know how big is a border of 900 horsepower. In the next picture, I'm going to show you how small it is. There it is. And this is 900 horsepower right there. He's hugging the heat exchanger. This is another system we do MCU model. Uh, it, again, it can be for building heat or consider as a semi instantaneous water heater. Another picture we shipped many, many years ago. Everything uh, is accessible, removable, repairable, electric panel, everything is on it. It's a 20 million BTU process, which means 600 horsepower. Again, it's a redundant system. So your mechanical room, this mechanical room right there, is 13 feet long, 6 feet wide. That's all you need for 20 million BTU process. So the principle, of course, is we modulate on the condensate. We don't modulate on the steam side. Always full steam pressure. And we flood the heat exchanger, so we extract latent heat out of each pound of steam and also sensible heat. In this example, for 4 million BTU process, and we wrote 6 PSI because even if we reduce the pressure, typically at 10 PSI, we will never have 10 PSI in the heat exchanger you should have a pressure drop to your control valve when you control on steam. So to compare with other design, let's compare 6 PSI. A conventional system, 4 million BTU process, you recuperate only the latent heat out of each pound. So full load, you will need 4,171 pounds per hour. In our case, because we flood the heat exchanger, we'll make a 3% energy saving. We're coming at 230 Fahrenheit. We're coming out at 200 Fahrenheit because we flood the heat exchanger. We're extracting 30 BTU more per pound of steam. So if we redo the math to compare conventional system at 6 PSI versus a maxi term at 100 PSI, still with condensate outlet temperature at 200 Fahrenheit at full load, we will need 6.26% less steam to perform the same process. Some of you might wondering, what do you do with your steam trap on drip legs? Uh, so we provide a condensate mixer to mix the cold condensate coming out here and mix with the uh, drip legs, steam trap drip legs on your system. Remember that drip legs, there's only water drops coming in, so it's kind of easy to uh, handle. It's a sparger that we select based on the maximum loads and pressure. Since we're always pushing at 100 PSI, as long as the condensate back pressure is lower than your steam pressure, we never need a condensate pump. 20% of maxi term project is 15 PSI and lower, especially on a retrofit project. So after the control valve, typically we want to lift because we don't want any piping on the floor. So let's say we're lifting 10 feet high. Every 27 inch gives you one PSI back pressure. So let's assume five PSI back, back pressure. If we're using 10 PSI, we don't need a condensate pump. Now, when the control valve is going to modulate, it's going to play with the heat surface area of the heat exchanger. We're, we're, we're going to give you the exact surface area based on your loads. This is the typical conventional system. Uh, pressure reducing valve stations, steam safety relief valves with vent to the roof, big steam control valve, 
heat exchanger, dedicate condensate palm, you will go back in the main receiver tank palm station and then go back in a deer reader to the steam border and you'll need check valve vacuum breaker, separator, white strainers. When we design toward maxi turn, this is how it can look like and we don't need the main receiver tank anymore, no more pressure reducing valve, no vent anywhere. The only moving part is the little control valve here. I say little because up to 10 million BTU process it's a half inch control valve. Again, that's the only moving part. Uh, if you have multiple units, uh, that's the only moving part you need to keep in stock. There's other parts around it, but they always remain in the same position during all operation. Of course, if we install this everywhere in the building, this will become a 100% closed loop, which means this will not be a deer reader anymore. It will be just a feed water tank. There will be almost no more surface blowdown on the boiler because it's a 100% closed loop, no makeup water whatsoever. Basically, there's less makeup water, zero flash loss anywhere, no more pressure reducing valve, no more steam safety relief valve with the vent to the roof because we stem the whole skid for high pressure vessel based on the safety valve set point on the steam border. The highest temp we've put so far, it's 600 PSI. No condensate receiver pump, smaller pipe size because we can use high pressure steam directly through the heat exchanger, smaller control valve like I explained earlier, no vacuum breaker, actually there is one that only open when you shut down the system, so there's no air injection in the condensate return line, six times less corrosive for doing so, so less six times less how means energy saving up to 20% I will show you in a couple of slides stability set point on temperature control less maintenance maintenance costs obviously 50 to 1 turn down with one small control valve less blow down on the border less chemical for the border and return lines this is a typical condensing boiler, which is our number one competition, uh, because most of design are going toward uh, condensing boiler. And um, just a reminder of, of the technology, how it should operate. This is the flue gas exhaust here at the chimney, if I should say, and you want to condense the flue gas. The dew point of cond condensation of the flue gas is 140 Fahrenheit. So if you have a return at 160, it will never condense. So design will have a set point typically around 120 Fahrenheit to make sure the return will be around 90 or 100 Fahrenheit to make sure we will condense the flue gas. So let's apply this to a maxi term. Let's give a set point here at 120 Fahrenheit with a return at 90 Fahrenheit. We can oversize the heat exchanger. The condensate will come out at full load, 130 Fahrenheit. If you bring this cold condensate back in a condensing stack economizer, heavy duty industrial built, this become a condensing steam boiler. Now remember those uh, numbers. S conventional system at 6 PSI, at 4 million BTU process, at full load, you will need 4,171 pounds per hour. With maxi term at 100 PSI, with condensate leaving at 200 Fahrenheit, still at full load, we will make 6.26% energy saving. What will be the number if the condensate comes out at 130? 12%. So 12% less steam at the point of use and 15% more efficiency on the border, that you have a potential to reduce up to 25% plus energy saving. So if the number here is 150, this will be greater. Okay, let's apply this to domestic hot water with condensate temperature leaving at 70 Fahrenheit, we're getting close of 20%, especially if we're using 150 PSI. So there's multiple cities all around the country, like Philly, Boston, Baltimore, New York City. Um, they have a district steam energy downtown. Uh, some of them will dump condensate here after they don't want to condensate back. We don't need a quencher to cool down the condensate. And for those who are return to condensate, typically they don't charge for the temperature. They, they have no credit or whatever to, from the temperature outlet. So we can cool down as max as we can to reduce the steam pressure at the inlet. And this is just a short list of cities. You can click pause if you want to go through it that have central steam downtown the city. Typical touch screen of a maxi term unit. There's a couple of values that we do, uh, we show, like the valve opening rate here, valve positioning. These are on-off valve only. They don't modulate. 
uh, again I invite you to contact us if you need more information but we also show the actual GPM and the actual BTU per hour so you can pull out trends with your BMS of the last 24 hours 6 months 10 years we also provide the E1 device um, so we have remote access from Montreal do, uh, without going through the firewall uh, of the customer and give remote support. When a building owner purchases a complete package, he should have access to 100% depreciation on his capital investment. Basically, bigger is this kid, more this applied to it. All the labor work on site cannot be applied, so there's only advantage to go full skid package. MCU versus VFFF, so let's go uh, jump in the different model of maxi term. MCU uh, stands for modulating condensate unit. It's the unit I just explained to you with the control valve on the condensate. Very, very good for any closed loop design for building heat reheat application. And domestic or water, it will be considered as a semi instantaneous water heater. VFFFF stands for vertical flooding feed forward. It's a full instantaneous domestic hot water heater from zero to the maximum range we keep plus or minus four Fahrenheit uh, very good also for CIP in process we do have a design now completely food grade design just want to let you know uh, there's two different option uh, mechanical self-contained mechanical blending valve on the water side so no pneumatic no electric very easy install works on a differential pressure as soon as someone will uh, open a shower a faucet or a hose it will mix it will create a pressure drop through the line and mix the right amount of very hot water with cold water and to whatever set point you want and of course we have electronic valve a back net mud bus whatever you need on protocol communication so how it works cold water is coming on this side here getting heat up here and uh, we mix with cold water at the blending valve right here uh, how do we flood the heat exchanger another patent we put on is uh, the steam trap is a little bit higher of the outlet keeping the flooding the, uh, level at the same level at all time so we make minimum 5% energy savings over the others and we can use it says 50 I will suggest 40 psi through the heat exchanger so you will need just one pressure regulator uh, no one third two third because we don't modulate on steam no steam safety relief valve because we're gonna stem the whole skid for high pressure vessel and again if you if the condensate back pressure sorry is lower than your steam pressure we don't need a condensate pump Typical application, um, emergency showers, booster heaters for kitchens, domestic hot water, obviously, and clean in place for food industry, and we do have food grade level. And since we heat the water inside the heat exchanger over 200 Fahrenheit, no bacteria can survive. This type of process, we keep plus or minus 4 Fahrenheit. We have a stainless steel valve couple of uh, food industry we have in uh, we can add to the list Pepsi Cola of course uh, just recently now uh, there are stock Montreal 30 60 90 120 US GPM ready to go the sidearm series uh, some of uh, you'll have this option offered to you on the request form for the MCU and also for the ultimate package basically is uh, it, let's say we heat 160 180 degree Fahrenheit here we can Put directly on the skid a secondary heat exchanger to perform domestic hot water or snow melt whatever lower temperature you want to control the benefit of this is we have one steam source for boat one condensate outlet for boat now be prepared for a shock because the next picture is going to be one of the smallest mechanical room you've never seen to perform building heat reheat and domestic hot water it's for Grand Valley University in Michigan here we go and I just want to remind you there's no vent no steam vents for the safety valve no vent for the flash tank nothing very small footprint zero lag duplex series every time you're gonna request a duplex design we're gonna offer you this design we just put another pattern again um, how it works instead of operating in parallel it operates in series cold water is coming on this side getting in the heat exchanger coming out here um, this valve is shut off so it's fully flooded of condensate then we're going in the second one and we perform set point the beauty of this design is this steam is on on both systems steam is right here waiting to get in so if something goes wrong on B high temperature alarm whatsoever happen 
A is already up and running, no downtime whatsoever. We can do maybe a first set point here or a second set point there, keeping those two running all the time, but they're both selected for 100% load, and it's a backup of each other. So accurate temperature control, zero downtime on alarm shutdown, no thermal stress due to lead lag, second unit is always on, less potential leaks, back net mod bus, very smooth operation, no noise. Clean steam generator for humidification and sterilization and also um, steam injection for food process, for example. Uh, basically, you're coming in here with steam pressure from the border room. We're going in the tubes like this coming out here. Clean steam, clean water. So bring us RO water. We're going to make you RO steam outlet here. And since the bundle is a YouTube bundle here, there's a hot spot right there uh, generating really dry steam quality steam and the steam quality controller is more for sterilization process to avoid any wet packs uh, on the process uh, we deliver really high uh, quality steam the basic is very simple you're coming with let uh, typically sterilizer requests like 60 psi steam uh, you will need like maybe 100 psi 125 what, whatever higher steam pressure you have available and on one side of the heat exchanger, we're coming with steam for the sterilization at 60 PSI. 60 PSI, uh, if you look at your steam table, you should have 308 degree Fahrenheit. And then on the other side, we bring, let's say, 100 PSI. And we're going to say to the controller, keep 60, but bring it at 312. We're making superheated steam. We're making high quality steam for sterilization. We have a world-class lab and seminar room in Montreal. You want to know more about our technology, our different options? We offer a one and a half day steam training. We have a 30 horsepower steam border, 100 PSI, making work different system, not only ours, on different conditions. We have a steam trap board with all the manufacturer on this, different design. You can see who works best or not, and we're not uh, we're not a steam trap manufacturer, so <laughs> we have uh, nothing to prove here. We have a HVEC system, humidification, steam coil and everything else some pictures and if you are a professional engineer we do offer 16 pdh credit for that training so you go on maxiterm.net uh, backslash our training um, or go on our website you'll find the, the link to it you can register online you'll see all the different dates it's two three times a year in yeah that's for the steam training I'm Patrick Lack, uh, Vice President of Sales and Business Development. I invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn. You can also email me at patrick at maxi-term.net. I will be more than pleased to answer your question, come visit you, and do a full presentation on our different technologies. STEAM is our passion. Hope you felt it, and um, if there's anything, please do not hesitate. Thank you.